Hey everybody, this is our last and third and, or our third and last night here in Arizona. Going out for probably a little shorter time, but we're gonna see if we can find stuff. Also, a quick reminder, this is September 4th, so we are kind of celebrating the loss, or honoring the loss of our wildlife hero, Steve Irwin. So, as soon as you guys see this, make sure to take a moment Remember those who are doing great things in wildlife conservation and do what you can to follow in their footsteps. And as for my part, we're gonna go out and see if we can find some cool wildlife to share with you all and do a little teaching on them. So, here's to the next animal. And he's alive. Look at you, hi. I didn't get that on video. You gotta walk up to it again and say, oh. First snake of the night. We have this beautiful little diamond back. Who's had something go after him right there because there's a little kink in his uh, back. But otherwise, he's looking pretty healthy. He's had a couple of sheds because he's got a couple little buttons on there. A nice dark pattern that'll probably fade out as he grows up. So. Good to see that the animals are already out on the move today. And we've got a few hours yet to look around, so hopefully we'll see a few more things up the trail here. Very nice. And thanks to it being baby season and uh, thanks to this night, this did end up becoming the most common species we saw on the whole trip. Uh, Western diamondbacks are a pretty a reliable species when you go down into the desert southwest to find um, they're very generalist animals so they can survive in a lot of different habitats including areas that are fairly heavily impacted by people so long as the big breeding ones don't come in contact with people very often because then they usually don't survive very long unfortunately but as you can see in each and every instance where we've come across them they are not particularly cantankerous animals they're not going to try and cause a fight with you rather as long as you give them two feet of space they'll give you all the space you need as well to stay safe okay all right, all right dude let's get you off the road you go on your own we'll let you come on keep going I want you off the road <laughs> Come on, a little further. Up and up. There you go. Good boy. And apparently got a bunch of longhorn cattle on the road. With the Big. baby just peeing away in the middle of the road. Come on. Please move. We got Diamondback baby number two here. Another one with a beautiful pattern, a little bit lighter in color. He's got kind of interesting little cross banding on his tail there too. Hey you, where's your parents? I want to see those guys too. So, yep, two snakes so far. We'll help him off the road, the direction he was going here. Yeah, I know, mm. it touched you. There you go. Now you're up off the road. Scoot, scoot. You wanna, you wanna scoot that way, dude. Go on. I don't want anyone to run you over, okay? Keep going. There we go. All right. Well, it's a good thing we did stop to take a couple of photos after we got him up over the ridge because that plant decided to take the spotlight at the end of the little clip there. But 
Now this was definitely a section of road that was not great for this guy to be on because on one side was a very steep uh, slope that came up off the road and then on the other side it dropped off uh, into I think someone's driveway almost actually. So we needed to get him up and off so that he wasn't stuck just crawling along the side of the road where someone would be a lot more likely to hit him. And there wasn't a whole lot of traffic out here, but we did see enough cars that it would have been a concern. What species do we have out here? Hi, Sean. How's it going? How's it going, sir? Oh, it's a Great Plains toad. Look at that. All right, so I've seen these guys in Colorado. I've seen them in New Mexico. And now I've seen them in Arizona. An Axorus cognatus, the Great Plains toads. And this one's pretty messy. Whoop! He's a good one. <laughs> we'll let him go. See if there's any other interesting species that are over here since they seem to be enjoying this particular puddle. but it's actually pretty solid right here. Now where were the other toads? And on the other side of the puddle, another slightly differently patterned Great Plains toad. He is handsome. Hello, sir. You are adorable. You see bugs? because the headlamp is attracting all sorts of bugs for you. You should eat some of them. Mm-hmm. Or you'll just leave, okay. No idea what that is, but it's interesting it's calling. So here's something interesting, and I actually grow them at home. This is, or I used to, uh, Proboscidea parviflora, or a relative, the Devil's Claws. There's one stuck in the dirt here. And you can see why they're called Devil's Claws, because those will hook into things and then get carried around, and then the seeds fall out from in there. There's actually a couple of them. And one that's a little more hooked than that. So I grow Proboscidea louisianica at home. There's another pod there, gotta be careful where you step. But this one has much larger pods and there's one variety that actually develops four claws. Got a kangaroo rat amongst the uh, cactus here. Look at him. Hello, sir. You see that long black tail there? That's cool. Pretty color. Hello, you.
especially up in the mountain here. There's the road. Here goes one. tarantula out on the hunt. <laughs> He's just going. Bonacoma calcotes. Or chalcotes. <laughs> Got spooked by something. <laughs> Not sure what. <laughs> oh, he got the butt up. He's ready to kick hairs. So best to give him a little bit of space. As we sit here and there's a bunch of these little bicolored moths landing on the lights. Maybe we'll get lucky and hunt a couple of them. <laughs> and we have our Sonoran toad out here. It's a fairly young one. So got a lot of his really distinct spots and he's kind of skinny, but he's cool nonetheless. Look at that face. And remember, do not lick the toads. It will not turn out like a lot of people think it will. The toxin might contain a hallucinogen, but it's also just straight up a toxin and it will hurt you badly. All right, we'll leave you be, dude. Little gopher snake. Hi. You're just going. You're a little lighter colored. Lighter colored. Hey, you. Here you go. Come here. Hi. Are you recording? Mm-hmm. Okay. Got another little snoring gopher snake here. Petuophus for Athenas, and he's a lot lighter than the one that we found last night, too. A lot more pale, kind of a sandy color. Let me turn this down a little bit, that might help. He's got a little bit of pink on his sides. Beautiful belly. Squirming away. Definitely one of this year's hatchlings. These guys hatch out pretty big. Kind of impressive, actually. And quite docile, as you can see. As long as they know that you're not a threat, of course, he still wants to just kind of get up and go. But we'll get a couple of photos and then let him off on the side of the road where he was heading. So <laughs> One of the most common snakes in the southwest. I'm actually kind of surprised that we didn't see more of them than we did on this trip because this guy and the one before and coming up soon well, made only three that we saw over the whole trip. Meanwhile, rattlesnakes greatly outnumbered them. Funny thing too, reminder, these guys, although they will often sit up in that S-shaped position, they'll huff and puff and they'll rattle their tails, most of that behavior is not, contrary to popular belief, mimicry of rattlesnakes. In fact, the, the vibrating of the tail is a behavior that these guys were doing before rattlesnakes ever existed. So, and as many species do worldwide. Rattlesnakes are the ones that just took it a step further. All right, dude, you were heading off this way and turns into the desert pretty quick, just right here. So we'll let you go and you'll find your own way. Off into the bush. Blurry, but oh my god, we gotta have a lean out here. There we go. 
goes. Into someone's yard. Going to visit. Going There's up There's more than one. Oh, yeah. I got him. Not Bolinas. <laughs> knock, knock. Novelina's visiting somebody's house. There they go. That's cool. We do have ourselves a young red spotted toad out here. That we we'll might end up finishing off the night with. Still fingers crossed we've only got like a mile or so of road left to check, but we might find something else if we're lucky. He's adorable though. Alright. Alright, we've got and the toad was not the last thing of the night. In fact, we do have another little young snoring gopher snake. This one's actually, this one's got a lot of kind of darker browns on him too. And he's rattling his tail in defense here and there. And as a reminder, a lot of people think that's rattlesnake mimicry. But in fact, a lot of snakes worldwide do that. That behavior is an old ancestral defensive thing that they do. He's actually rattling his tail, oh, or he was. But there's a lot of snakes that do that, and rattlesnakes actually took that behavior and modified, added on to it. So, many other snakes did it first. Rattlesnakes just did something a little extra later on. So, yeah, this guy, they start out tiny, but he'll eventually get to five, maybe six feet if he survives out here. A lot of things that eat them, though. Babies are basically food for everything else out here, including even sometimes some of the bigger invertebrates. So we'll get a couple of photos and then put them across the road here so he doesn't get hit by anybody. All right, folks. We're back here again, finishing out once more with one of the big backdoor hotel toads either law or order. <laughs> it was a little slower night tonight, but we found some good animals still. We did sadly see one large adult diamondback that had been just hit, but luckily found the uh, gopher snake, the last baby gopher after that. So, wrapping up here in Arizona with one of the signature toads to finish out. As always, if you'd like to see some of the additional videos and clips, that'll or videos and pics that'll come off of this. Uh, you can always find me on social media at Carlton Carnivores, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. Uh, pay, you can join to help support documentaries like this at patreon.com slash hcarlton and also get extra benefits back. Other links for the website, carltoncarnivores.com, merchandise and more will be in the description below the video. But until next time, there's frog butt for your pleasure. And I'm Hawkin Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores. <laughs>